All right, welcome back guys. Today I've got a little bit of a different video for you. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I post every day with my training content, Athletic Every Day. But what would Athletic Every Day be without a most athletic sports tier list? I actually tried to make this video in the past, but I think I made it way too long, so I just want to jump right into it. So the way that I'm going to categorize what makes an athletic sport is using an article from Strength Matters that I read a few years back, and it's always been at the back of my mind when I think about athleticism. And the way I categorize athleticism based on this article is there are 10 categories of 10 qualities that make up what makes human athleticism, human athleticism. So number one, strength, also known as the ability to create force. Number two, speed, the ability to minimize the time cycle of a given movement. Power, the ability to create maximal force in minimal time, also known as strength times speed. Mental resilience, the ability to push yourself out of the comfort zone. I feel like this is a bit of a... Uh, sort of a non-factor, because almost all sports, every high-level sport requires mental resilience. There may be some sports that require more than others, but I think every single sport under the sun, if you're doing something reasonably athletic, then it requires mental resilience to continue practicing, to continue doing it and pushing through in order to get good at it. So I'm not going to include that one when I'm accounting for these sports. Aerobic capacity, the maximum amount of physiological work that an individual can do as measured by oxygen consumption. Anaerobic capacity, the maximal work performed during maximum intensity short-term physical effort. Balance and coordination, the ability to perform movements with precision and grace. Agility, the ability to be nimble on your feet, move quickly from one movement pattern to another. Stability, the ability to prevent movement in one part of the body while creating movement in another, thus protecting vulnerable areas. And then lastly, mobility, flexibility and motion, the ability to have full range of motion through muscles and joints. So those are the factors that I'm going to be basing every single one of these sports off of. Obviously, uh, a sport that, can, that has every single one of those components to a maximum ability, a theoretical sport, obviously no sport has all of them to a perfect degree. Uh, by their very nature, certain sports, by specializing in some qualities, then they can't specialize in others. You know, the law of uh, diminishing returns, if you get too good in one, then you have to sacrifice another. For example... You can't become maximally strong and then also have maximal endurance. There is a trade-off point between certain qualities. But it's my opinion that the sport that has the greatest balance of all of these qualities to the greatest extent would, in my opinion, be the greatest um, and most athletic sport. So let's get started. American football, NFL. I would consider this sport to be S-tier. It has a great requirement of strength. You need to have a good amount of speed, power, agility, anaerobic capacity, uh, well, maybe not so much uh, aerobic capacity because there are a lot of stops in the game, but most of these components, uh, I think NFL is hitting really, really well. So it's definitely going to be up there with the S tier. If you don't believe me, go and watch NFL Combine and look at how athletic all of these dudes are doing all of these tests. Next, badminton. I think I'm going to put badminton into the A tier. It is a very athletic sport. Um, just because they're not moving around heavy weights and they're not, you know, it's not an impact sport. You know, some people would even consider um, badminton to be kind of like a sissy sport. But if you actually look at the movement patterns these guys are doing on the court, they're cutting about the change of direction, the agility that these guys have to have, the speed, the strength to be able to reverse your body's uh, momentum and turn back and then get to a different shot. I think this sport is definitely A tier. Go and try playing badminton at a higher level if you don't believe me. Next, basketball. Basketball obviously has to go in the S tier. Uh, I played basketball for quite a bit at university for many years. Um, you have to be strong to be a basketball player. You have to have a good amount of power development for vertical jump. You also have to be fast, agile. You also have to have a fair amount of um, uh, balance and coordination. You also have to have a good amount of agility, stability, mobility. It's all there with basketball. Um, I think that's a pretty much it's a pretty much a given for basketball. Um, now, ba ballet is not actually a sport. It's a physical discipline. But I would argue that if you actually look at male ballerinas, just ballerinas in general, if you actually look at the level of grace and the level of athleticism they have to have in order to perform these movements with grace and style, and then the amount of time they have to do that, do that for in duration for the entirety of a performance, it's very, very long. And I would argue that it's actually up there as well, up in the S tier with the other sports, even though uh, ballet is not a sport. But go and watch some highlights of ballerinas especially male ballerinas, how high they're getting off the floor, the positions they're getting their body into, uh, and then try and argue me against that because I think that it's definitely S tier. Next, moving on, baseball. I would argue that baseball is probably more in high A tier. Um, I, I don't know how to change these so that it's, uh, you're changing the order, but I'm going to put baseball in high A tier. 
um, mainly because it doesn't require as much. I mean, yes, on often when when you're when you're batting, you do have to run between bases, and there is a sprinting component there. But it's not as much as if you were, for example, running around on a basketball court. There's not as much movement in that respect. Uh, I guess on fielding, you do have to run and get the ball, but there's a lot of stop and starting, and there is a lot of power development. When I guess you could maybe say that it is S tier because you do have to do it running around, but. I would argue if you took an NFL football player, an average NFL football player, and an average MLB baseball player at the highest level, I think the football player is winning out nine times out of ten. Um, I don't know if you could say the same for basketball. Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm going to go with high eight. It's definitely more athletic than badminton, in my personal opinion, if I can get it to change. There we go. Next, bodybuilding. I think we're going to have to all agree that bodybuilding is a D-tier athletic sport. You pretty much max out strength and maybe a little bit of um, anaerobic capacity. But agility, there's none in bodybuilding. Stability, I mean, maybe to an extent if you're posing on stage. Um, you know, I guess mobility if you're getting into the bottom of squat. But again, some bodybuilders don't even necessarily do that much. Uh, barbell work, it's a lot of machines. Uh, I don't think anyone's really kidding themselves into thinking that bodybuilders are athletic. They might look athletic. I mean, <laughs> I don't think they even look athletic. But I don't think that it's a very athletic sport. And I hope you guys all agree with me there. Next, calisthenics. When I'm saying calisthenics... Um, I guess you could also categorize gymnastics, but I've, I have separated gymnastics and calisthenics on this list. I made this list a while back, but um, yeah, I would argue that calisthenics is a somewhat athletic sport, um, mostly bodyweight movements. I'm going to put it in the B tier purely because there isn't a lot of uh, ground-based movements. Some people would consider uh, flips and tricking as part of calisthenics, you know, like doing a backflip or doing like high jumps and stuff. But I think a lot of people, when they think of calisthenics, they think of people, you know, doing ring pull-ups, muscle-ups, front levers, planches, things of that nature. And while those are indeed athletics, uh, very athletic, um, I wouldn't consider them to be hitting all the points. For example, again, let's compare a badminton player to a calisthenics athlete. You probably say like how oh, they're too complex to compare or they're too different to compare. They're just each good in their own respect. But again, if you're looking across all of these categories, in my opinion, I would consider calisthenics to be B tier. Next, moving on to cricket. Cricket is sometimes referred to as like the English version of baseball or vice versa. Baseball is like the American version of cricket. Um, I don't think you can make an argument for it being in a different tier, really. I'd say cricket would also be in sort of mid to high A tier, maybe next to or in line with badminton. The only real difference between cricket and baseball is the size of the pitch or the field and the nature of how you run. You just run in a short distance back and forth in cricket, whereas baseball you're running obviously around that diamond shape. So there is a lot more distance to cover, uh, but I would argue that the fielders have to be more athletic and the bowlers have to be a bit more athletic in cricket because you have that run up, it's a lot more elastic, whereas in baseball you're just standing on the spot and throwing the ball. So that's what I'm thinking of when I'm categorizing those two in relation to one another. Um, so that for that reason, I guess I could put cricket sort of next to baseball again. I'm not really sure where to put it. Next, we have CrossFit. Uh, I actually trained and worked in a CrossFit gym for a couple months when I was in Norway a few months back. And spending more and more time around CrossFit athletes and people that are sort of moderate to high level in CrossFit, uh, I did come to the conclusion that it is somewhat of an athletic sport, but I can't really rank it higher than calisthenics, to be honest. Well, I can't really rank it into the A tier. Uh, I think I'd have to put it high B tier. Purely because in calisthenics, it is purely just about, sorry, in uh, CrossFit, it's purely just about work capacity. How much work can you do in a short period of time? The more work you can do in a short period of time, the better. Um, there's not really much focus on movement quality. Um, well, at the highest level of, of CrossFit, you know, if you, for example, look at the, uh, the butterfly kipping pull-ups, if you're looking at um, just trying to cycle movement patterns as quickly as possible, there's less emphasis on form and more just trying to get as much work in as possible. Um, I would argue that they're the most conditioned athletes and the most um, the highest work capacity athletes on this list, but they're definitely not the most athletic, hence why I've put CrossFit into B tier. Not That being said, though, I do think it is a useful modality for getting people into other sports, for example, with Olympic weightlifting, which we'll cover a little bit later, uh, and other things like gymnastics and calisthenics, but they do, sort of do their own bastardized version of all of those movements, and for that reason, it is less athletic than the true original disciplines. Next, let's move on to football. I think personally, uh, football is going to be high A tier. Uh, it can't really be put into the same category as these other three. So football, basketball, American football, basketball, and ballet. Purely because it doesn't require the same extent to all. It's not touching all of those components in the same way. You do have to have a fantastic aerobic and anaerobic capacity to be a football player. You have to run fast. Strength, I wouldn't argue, is a bigger component for football. Football players don't have to be necessarily that strong. 
Um, they don't necessarily have to have the best mobility either. Football players are notoriously considered to be quite stiff, I would argue. And I guess you could also say that they're not as powerful as a result because they're not as strong. So for that reason, football is going into middle A tier, around near where badminton is. Golf. Golf is somewhat of an athletic sport. I think I'm going to put it in C tier. I can, I can already hear a lot of the bodybuilding bros saying to me, how can you possibly consider golf to be more athletic than bodybuilding? And I would probably say that's a fair point, touche, but um, the fact that it is a sport, it's considered, to, I know they're both considered to be sports, but the fact that you have to hit a ball with accuracy and poise over an extended distance and you have to have a level of skill in order to do that, um, there, there, is a big compa- there is a big power component and a mobility component to doing that. Also a balance and coordination and stability component to that. Um, not really agility, to be honest, um, strength and speed only really in the swing and the drive, but for the most part, you're just walking around and getting a caddy. So I guess I would have to put maybe golf into detail, actually changing my mind. So it can only be just one level above bodybuilding. Anyway, moving on, let's look at gymnastics. For me, gymnastics is probably also S tier. When I say um, gymnastics, I'm considering all of the events. So we're looking at the floor events, tumbling, we're looking at uh, the rings, the bars, pommel horse, um, I, can't, I can't remember all the names of the events, but we're talking about full body total athleticism here, guys. I can't think of another sport that requires athletes to be so strong and so densely strong throughout their whole entirety of their body by performing all these routines. It's very rare that gymnast, gymnasts will specialize in every single event. They'll usually just pick one or two that they're really good at. But um, especially if you did tumbling and then some kind of ring, ring event, I think that that is full body athleticism right there. The amount of force that goes through your legs when you're landing from one of these, these tumbles through the air, you're sometimes landing with 11, 12, or even, you know, I think it's up to, I think it's 10 or 11 times your body weight uh, going through your legs when you do that landing, which is why the floors have to be, uh, they have to be rubberized, well, not rubberized, but they have to have that uh, spring in the floor. They have a springboard in there to help absorb some of the shock. Otherwise, if you did that on concrete, your legs would definitely break. <laughs> or uh, if you if you weren't conditioned for it, at least. So um, yeah, gymnastics, definitely in the S tier, no question about that. Uh, field hockey. Field hockey, and I would consider this a little bit different from ice hockey. Obviously, you're know, playing on a different surface, but I would also consider them in different tiers. I'm going to put field hockey in the B tier, and I'm going to put ice hockey in the A tier. The reason I'm going to do them together, because they're somewhat of a similar sport. You're hitting something with a stick and running around. But field hockey, um, I would consider it to be... In fact, you know what? I'm going to put them both in A tier because you are doing a lot of running around. There's a lot of agility involved in both of the sports. But I think ice hockey is definitely up there a lot more because of the forces and the angles that you're getting into. I would even consider ice hockey maybe in the high A tier. And field hockey, I'm going to put it just in front of badminton next to football, cricket. Again, a lot of these are interchangeable. um, But as long as they're all in the same tier, you get the sort of categories that I'm looking at and the sort of rankings here. But yeah, as I was saying... Field hockey and ice hockey. I would say that ice hockey is more athletic because of the angles and the lack of friction and the mobility that you have to do to get into these positions. And because of the lack of friction, the amount of speed that you're getting up to and the impact and the forces that these players have to go through, I think that um, ice hockey is definitely a more athletic sport than field hockey. But that being said, field hockey, still a lot of high forces. Um, You're having to hit the ball hard. There's a lot of power. There's mobility. You're basically bent over the whole game if you're dribbling the ball with, with a stick. And um, yeah, there's just a great deal of skill involved with it as well. So that's the reason why I'm putting it in A tier. Next, we have uh, the jumping events in athletics. So long jump, triple jump, um, high jump, uh, just all, all of these, these field events. I think I also have all the throwing events in another category here somewhere. Maybe not. Um, yeah, if, guys, if there's anything I am forgetting in this video, I am probably going to do another tier list with the sports that I miss. But um, yeah, for long jump and triple jump, I'm going to have to put it in high A tier. Purely because it's so specialized. I'm going to put it above ice hockey because it is just pure athleticism. You know, running, jumping, sprinting. Um, All of the jumping events, especially long jump and triple triple jump, they do involve building up speed for a sprint. But they also require a great deal of elasticity and dynamic strength in the legs in order to be able to carry that momentum and transfer it into vertical and horizontal force to get you to travel as far as possible. That being said, um, it is just a predominantly lower body sport. You don't really use much upper body when you do these movements apart from momentum in the arm swing. Unlike with football, when you know, you're know you pushing off with tackles, um, you know, in, in basketball, when you're reaching up to do a dunk. Uh, gym, uh, ball- ballet, for example, using the arms of grace and gymnastics, obviously you're doing pulling and pushing patterns with the upper body. There isn't as much of that in long jump and triple jump, but that being said, 
uh, the amount of force that, the, that is going through these guys' legs when they're doing these jumps and the speed that they're building up is absolutely ridiculous. And there is a reason why a lot of other sports will incorporate athletic training into their modalities when they when they when they're into their own training modalities. For example, with field hockey, sprinting. For, for example, with field, with field hockey, with football, um, a lot of field-based sports like rugby. They will do sprinting drills and they will work on their sprinting mechanics and jumping mechanics in order to improve their effectiveness on the field. So that is the reason why I've put it in high A tier. Next, we have parkour. I think I'm going to have to put parkour into the S tier, guys. Parkour is a fantastically athletic sport. Uh, the reasoning being is that I can't really think of a component that's not being ticked off to a decent extent here. Uh, you know, you're getting mobility benefits every time you try and land from a jump. If, you get, if you've ever seen a parkour athlete jump off a three-story building and land it without a scratch on his body not getting hurt, that's because they have fantastic mobility to be able to get into that full squat and then roll out of it. And to be able to hit all these positions in the air, I mean, I would argue that uh, parkour and calisthenics together would make gymnastics, which is why gymnastics is so high up on this list. Um, I need to reorder the S tier at the end of the video, but... Um, you, you can't deny that parkour is definitely going to be up there. You know, just the amount of strength you have to have to be able to do these jumps, to be able to cover the distances and to be able to absorb that force in the landing, the speed you have to build up to be able to, you know, cover a certain distance jumping off a roof like this guy's doing here, landing a certain distance away. Power, obviously, for jumping ability. Um, aerobic capacity is maybe the only one that I maybe wouldn't consider unless you're doing like an extended length routine where you're trying to run an extended distance, so more like free running type, re free running type thing. Parkour again. I remember once someone once telling me the difference between parkour and free running. I may get this the wrong way around, but the difference between parkour and free running is that parkour is more uh, logical. It's more sort of like I'm trying to get from A to B in the most efficient way possible, whereas free running is more to do with just looking pretty along the way and doing fancy routines along that. So I guess they are kind of merged, but I'm ranking them both together because essentially they are more or less the same thing. I'm sure the free running and the parkour bros would argue against that, but that's that. It's an S tier. Next, we've got powerlifting. Powerlifting, I can't really look at you guys with a straight face and put it anywhere above C tier. I mean, you're basically just maxing out the strength component and more or less that's it. Maybe the mobility component, but to be honest with you guys, are you really getting any mobility benefit from doing a low bar squat, doing a maximum arch bench? And, you know, sumo deadlift, I would say no, so it's going in the C tier. That being said, they are the, some of the strongest athletes in the world. Probably not as strong as strongman, but they're definitely up there, up in the C tier. Next, we've got rowing. Rowing is um, not a particularly athletic sport in my eyes. I think rowing is going to have to go in the C tier with powerlifting, uh, purely because it's just maxing out the aerobic and anaerobic side of the, side of the sport. I guess you are in that pulling movement pattern, working on your strength, but... You know, is there a speed component? Not particularly. Um, is there an agility component? Absolutely not. Stability, maybe to a certain extent. Mobility, not really. So rowing is remaining in the C tier. Uh, next up, let's look at rugby. I think rugby is definitely got to be in the S tier as well. Um, I think one thing I forgot to mention, a caveat I forgot to mention in this, is that position does make a big uh, difference as to how athletic this individual athlete is. So, for example, a winger in rugby is going to be a lot more generally athletic than a prop, for instance. And I'm sure it's the same in football and in basketball. Point guards, I would consider, I mean, not, maybe not in today's NBA, but point guards are for the most part more athletic than centers because they have to be, they have to be faster, they have to be more agile, they have to be quicker on their feet. And I'd argue they probably also have to have decent conditioning. But, you know, position as basketball is becoming a thing. And I think rugby, to an extent, is going the same way as well. You are starting to see props nowadays, you know, running the distance of the pitch, being able to be faster and less, more like a bruiser, not really built like a brick shit house. Um, that does happen to an extent in today's rugby. But, you know, if you're going to put NFL up there, you've also got to put rugby up there as well. I think NFL and rugby are too similar to consider. Uh, at the end of this video, I am going to reorder the S tier so that it more reflects closely what I consider to be the most athletic sport. Uh, next, we have sprinting. Now, sprinting, I can't really sound congruent with myself, and that's not seem like too much of a hypocrite if I don't put it in with the A tier with the jumps. Um, it is a very, very pure form of athleticism, just running in a straight line as fast as you possibly can, or maybe in a curved line if you're doing a 200 or 400 meters. Um, you, to an extent, if you're doing a 400 meters, you will get some anaerobic uh, conditioning there. You'll have to work on your anaerobic capacity. Uh, but, you know, 100 meters, it's just pure anaerobic. There's no aerobic component in there at all. Um, balance and coordination. I mean, yes, if you're sprinting at top speed, you will naturally have to have balance. 
Agility, I don't really think there's much of that in sprinting. Stability, yes, because you know if you're, you're for the most part you're always on one foot, you have to have stability through your core so that you're always balanced and in control, running in that straight line. Uh, you, uh, of all sports, this is obviously the fastest sport. There's not there's no faster sport than sprinting. Uh, strength, yes, sprinters have to be very strong. Power, you have to be able to create maximal force in minimal time. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for sprinting. I think A tier is pretty much where it should be. Again, I'm going to reorder A tier as well at the end. Um, I'm not really sure about how maxing out on a certain component versus versus having, um, but, sorry, maxing out on a certain component, having a decent level of other components versus being sort of more generally balanced across all components will match up in my mind. But sprinting is definitely in the A tier, mid moderate to high A tier. Next up, we have strongman. Now, strongmen, strongmen are generally considered to be stronger than powerlifters, I would argue, for the most part. And they have to do a greater variety of events. It's not just squat, bench, deadlift. It's not as one-dimensional as powerlifting. And for that reason, I would actually consider strongmen to be more athletic than powerlifters. And I would, ha I would actually consider them to be decently um, athletic for the most part. Um, let's have a look at putting them into B tier. I don't know whether to put them higher or lower than calisthenics. I think I'm going to have to put them lower than calisthenics. Calisthenics athletes, yeah, they can be kind of athletic, but it's more sort of like, I guess you could say upper body calisthenic, upper body athleticism, whereas strongman, I would argue, is sort of full body total athleticism, but it's more on the strength, sort of high force side of uh, athleticism, full body athleticism, rather than just on the, the power side and the speed side. Prove me wrong, though. Um, you know, if you guys disagree with any of my judgments here, then please drop a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, but moving on, let's talk about swimming. I actually used to be a decently high-level swimmer. I swam for a decade of my life, so from the age of 8 to 18. Reached national level in the country, so I know quite a bit about swimming. Um, it is a sport that requires a great deal of mobility through the shoulders. There is a good amount of anaerobic and aerobic capacity required. Uh, power and speed, I would argue not so much. I mean, you're literally pulling through a viscous liquid, so there's going to be a limit to how fast your limbs can actually move versus if you're moving through air. Uh, and for that reason, I would have to put swimming in maybe the B tier or the C tier. I'm going to put it in low B tier, but you can't really say that it's more or less athletic than rowing. I guess you could say it's more total body athleticism, but then again, I guess in rowing you do use your legs to initiate that, that, um, that drive phase when you're pulling through the water. But um, yeah, I would say that swimmers are decently athletic, but you can't say that they're more athletic than most land-based sports. You know, the, the medium that you're competing in will obviously confine how athletic you can be. Next up, we have table tennis. Table tennis, I'm going to put it in low A tier. It's kind of similar in terms of the agility component to badminton. Obviously, it's on a different court. Uh, but the table tennis component... Components of athleticism that table tennis works, I would argue there is a great deal of agility, as I mentioned, um, aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity. It's very stop-start, the sport. You know, in between points, you're having ability to rest. It's not just constantly on, on, on the whole time, like in football. Um, there is a lot more mobility, I would say, required for table tennis. The amount of frontal plane movement that you have to have and transverse plane movement through that core, there's a lot of core stability and coordination that you have to have for table tennis. In fact, I would potentially argue that it's difficult to say what's more athletic, table tennis or badminton. I think because you're moving through a smaller area and you're playing on a smaller, more confined table versus badminton playing on a larger court, having to cover more distance. I would say personally that badminton wins out in this one, but table tennis is definitely still up there in the sort of low A tier. Um, moving on, tennis. How athletic would I consider tennis to be? I think tennis has got to be A tier. Uh, I actually work at a gym where we do tennis. I think, anyway, I see a lot of tennis athletes playing, and I just sometimes watch them on the court. Even from a young age, the kids have to have such a high level of skill. Um, I think of all sports, I know I didn't. I know I said that mental resilience wasn't a very a big component, but you know, tennis is for the most part an individual sport. It's just you versus your opponent. Same with uh, badminton and table tennis to a certain extent when you play singles. But I think the mental resilience that you have to have on tennis, the size of the court, the amount of force that's going through your body, the amount that you have to uh, resist, and the amount that you have to um, just yeah, yeah the, amount, the amount of resilience that you have to have in order to play this sport is incredibly high. Obviously, the agility is a very big component. Balance and coordination is a very big component. Aerobic and anaerobic capacity are a big part. Strength, power, and speed definitely required in order to hit the ball fast. Um, I'm going to have to put tennis a little bit higher, I think. Um, probably high A tier. I don't know whereabouts in A tier. Once again, at the end, I'm going to reorder these. But for the most part, 
um, they're going to stay where they are. Next, we have the throwing events. So we're talking uh, javelin, we're talking shot put, we're talking hammer throw. Those three things are, those three sports are, in my opinion, to, they're, 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 in my opinion, uh, some of the most athletic athletics events that you can have. So especially javelin, where you're having an extended run-up, and then you're having to just throw as far as you possibly can. There's obviously a great amount of mobility happening through the shoulder, through the elbow, through the arm, through the hips. I think there is a great deal of um, athleticism required in throwing something as far as you possibly can. I would argue that javelin is probably more athletic than shot put or hammer throw. Um, but that being said, and, and discus as well, sorry, I forgot to mention discus, but yeah, the rotational component, all of those uh, throwing events, the hammer throw, the discus, and the shot put, um, there is also a great deal of strength and power obviously involved in those. You know, you see, you, you obviously see highlights of these, these lifters, <laughs> of these throwers in the gym, you know, power cleaning, something like two times their body weight or something or even more. So it's very, very impressive when these events are like that. So I'm going to have to put the throwing events into the A tier along with the jumping events. It is whole body athleticism because obviously you're standing on your legs and you're throwing with your arms. So I'm going to have to put it above jumping in my opinion. Um, but that being said, it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. I'm going to put sprinting a little bit lower as well. Um, I don't know whereabouts to put it in with, the, with these sports. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but that's a decent order. Next, we have triathlons. So um, you can have different definitions of what a triathlon is. For me, sprinting, uh, sorry, running, cycling, and swimming is like the you know the standard triathlon. You consider that maybe an Ironman. Obviously, the distance is going to play a big role as to how much aerobic versus anaerobic capacity you're going to require. But generally, they tend to be extended distances, extended lengths of time. So the amount of force, strength, speed, and power that you're going to be putting out in these events. The agility that you're going to require, you know, you're not exactly <laughs> fighting against other component uh, competitors. You're not trying to fight anyone. You're not trying to evade any tackles or anything. It's more or less just swimming, cycling, and running in a straight line and just doing that as fast as you can over an extended distance. So for that reason, it's missing out on a lot of components, and I'm going to have to put it into sort of moderate to high C tier. Uh, it's, it's basically just the other end of the spectrum to powerlifting. Powerlifting is high force. Um, you know, maximum, well, basically maximum force, but then there's practically no endurance involved. And then, you know, triathlon is the other end of that, you know, very, very high endurance, but very, very low force um, involved because, you know, you're just doing thousands and thousands and thousands of reps and all of these movements. Moving on, fighting. I put fighting, I'm just going to consider all martial arts. And again, I'm probably going to butcher this and I'm well aware that it's such a diverse range of sports and, and uh, disciplines when it comes to martial arts, mixed martial arts, MMA. Um, all of these things, all of these sports, they do have some commonalities, but obviously there is a big difference between striking events and grappling events. I would, I would personally consider striking events to be more athletic than grappling events. Grappling is more about isometric strength and you know, core strength and stability, whereas striking is more about you know, being elastic, bouncing off the floor, um, being fast on your feet, having good agility. So um, if you're going to combine and make an amalgamation of those two, I'm going to have to put fighting in the S tier anyway, because then you are more or less ticking all the boxes. Um, I think in S tier, to be honest with you guys, I'm thinking about reordering it, but I can't really think of a reason why I could put any of these sports higher than the other one. I would definitely have to put gymnastics above basketball and football for that reason the only one that's the only one i can say without a doubt is definitely more athletic than all the other ones um because i guess gymnastics and ballet have that in common they're both i mean obviously gymnastics is a sport but it's more of an art form in my eyes in that it's more aesthetically focused and um, you get points taken away from your total score at the end if for example your toes aren't pointed and you're not absolutely perfect straight and tight and rigid so for that reason i would guess i would put gymnastics up there in the top Next, let's move on to volleyball. Volleyball, I would consider to be another one of these A-tier sports. I'm going to put it up here with baseball, in between sprinting and baseball. Um, again, a lot of these A-tier sports are interchangeable, and I'd be happy to see what you guys think about the ordering of the A-tier sports. But yeah, volleyball, there's a lot more of a vertical component because of the height of the net. Um, you often see these highlights of guys you know, jumping as high as they possibly can and then spiking that ball straight down over the net. There's a lot of verticality in volleyball. There's a lot of a ta there's a very big tactical tactical component as there are with all of these sports. That's something I'm not even gonna rank all these sports on. You know the tactics and the actual skill for mastering all the skills and the techniques in each of these sports 
is a completely other box of frogs I'm not talking I'm not even going to talk about here I'm just talking about pure base level just general athleticism and if you took just the average volleyball player I think you'd see that they have a very high vertical jump which means a good level of uh, strength and speed and power I think you'd also notice that they have a good amount of stability, balance, and coordination. In order to be able to do a vertical jump, you have to have all three of those things, especially mobility. Um, aerobic and anaerobic capacity, yeah, um, the sport is played over an extended period of time, so there is an element of both of those capacities. And yeah, for that reason, I'm going to have to put volleyball in the A tier. Last of all, we have weightlifting. You can just consider weightlifting as just like an explosive, powerful, fast form of powerlifting. It is a very one-dimensional sport in that it's just the two lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk, and it's just whoever has the heaviest total over that. But I think you are underselling Olympic lifting if you're doing that. There's a reason why so many of these other sports on this lift, especially the throwing, the jumping, um, American football, basketball to a certain extent, uh, rugby, all of these sports, there's a reason why uh, sprinters, there's a reason why all of these sports use the weightlifting derivatives in their training. They use these modalities because... They are incredibly athletic. They are incredibly useful for building German athleticism. The skills that you can learn from mastering the Olympic lifts and progressing them properly over time with good technique uh, can help you to improve your general athleticism. And I actually made a video about this a few weeks back if you want to go and check it out. Uh, so for this reason, I think that weightlifting pretty much ticks off all the boxes. With strength, obviously, weightlifters have to be strong. They're some of the strongest relatively uh, strongest. They have the, some of the highest relative strength across all sports in the world. So I think it's going to be up there on strength. Speed, you have to be quick to get underneath the bar. Obviously, it's not about speed over a given distance, but it's about speed getting underneath the bar. It's a different type of speed. Uh, you have to be very powerful, obviously, because if you don't produce the force quickly, you can't get underneath the bar in time. You're going to miss the lift. And uh, aerobic capacity, practically none required in weightlifting, maybe in, tra maybe in training for higher rep sets, but in the competition, absolutely not. Anaerobic capacity, yes, you have to be able to perform uh, maximal work in a maximum intensity, uh, maximal intensity work in a short period of time. Balance and coordination, without a doubt. Agility, um, I don't know. You could actually say that there's much agility involved in weightlifting. It depends how you define agility, but using this definition, the ability to be nimble on your feet and move quickly from one movement pattern to another. I don't know about the nimbleness on your feet, but the ability to move from you know the squatting, you know the, the squatting and the pulling pattern into the fully extended position and back into the squatting pattern. It's a very, very one-dimensional form of agility, but I guess you could say that that's there to a certain extent. Stability, without a doubt, you have to have a strong core in order to be, keep your, in order to be able to keep your spine upright. And then lastly, uh, mobility. I think you'll find that weightlifters are some of the most mobile athletes in the world. And I think for that reason, weightlifting is going to have to go into the high, in sort of moderate to high A tier. I'm going to put it above... I'm going to put it around there, football and cricket. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased towards it. You know, I've done a lot of weightlifting training myself. But I think just purely because of the level of general components that it covers and the how sim simple the sport is and yet complex in terms of all these different components that it trains, it's definitely going to be up there. Now, as I mentioned previously, I changed my mind about reordering the S tier. I think a lot of these, you can't really reorder and argue that they... You, you can make a really good, decent argument for why each of these sports is more athletic than the other ones. I don't think you can make that much of an argument as to why gymnastics is less athletic than all the other ones, but I think all of these can be interchanged with one another. You can put them and you can make a bunch of really convincing arguments for the S tier. And I would argue for that for the A tier, but I think for the most part on the A tier, a lot of these sports, you could say... Maybe some of them belong behind the other ones. Maybe some of them you know, belong in front of the other ones. I'm not 100% certain. I think sprinting is very one-dimensional and it can definitely go below, say, some of the other sports. But then again, you are specializing in a component. If you actually just, just look at sprinters, just see how they perform. If you to take a sprinter and put them into other sports, take away all the skill components, I think sprinters would perform in a lot, perform well in a lot of other sports. That could also be a, a pretty decent determinant of how athletic a sport is. If you take an uh, average athlete, average sort of professional high-level athlete in that sport, and then you were to just put them into the other sport and get them to do sort of the general movement patterns in that sport, erasing the skill, of course, um, you know, skill is obviously a very big component, but if you were to put them into that sport, how well would they perform in that sport? If you were to take a sprinter and put them in the water, obviously they probably wouldn't perform that well in swimming because it's a different medium, but if you were to take a sprinter and put them into a football game, they probably would do decently well, obviously allowing for skill, put them into rugby, they'd do quite well. But if you were to take a table tennis player and put them into a sprinting event, probably wouldn't work well the other way. But then again, 
table tennis and badminton especially are very much skill skill based sports there's less of an emphasis on athleticism anyway that is pretty much it for the tier list let me know what you guys thought in the comments let me know if there's a sport on here that i haven't included that you'd like to see me do or to talk about I may do another part two for this but these are all the sports that i could think of and this is my best guess based on my own biased judgment and you know sort of on this this criteria this hierarchy of of uh, athletic qualities where I put these sports. All right then, thank you very much for watching guys and I will catch you guys in the next one.